Recording. Go for it. Um, hi, I'm Nikita. I'm a rising senior, and I found the C's internship, honestly, just through, like, researching different space-related internships, because I always really knew I was interested in space exploration. Hi, I'm Trent. Um, I found, I'm a junior, I found the um, internship through NASA's newsletter. Hi, I'm Vivian. I'm a rising senior, and I found out about the internship on the NASA's website. Um, hi, I'm Akoa. I'm a senior, and I found out about C's because my dad somehow found it and made me apply. But I'm glad I did, so. Oh, sweet. Madison, you're up. Oh. Um, hi, I'm Madison. I'm a senior. And I found the C's internship through a friend who did it the year before. Hi, I'm Sweta. I'm a senior. And I found the C's internship pretty much through Google last year. And I did it. So I decided to do it again. OK, so. Throughout the whole program, even before our project even started, really, we had a lot of mentors and speakers like throughout the weeks that we were preparing for our project itself while we were doing background modules, which I'm pretty sure Trent will talk about later. But yeah, <laughs> um, they ranged from scientists to engineers, researchers, and like they were the leading like experts in their fields and we even had a retired astronaut at one point, which was pretty cool. His name was Greg Chamatoff. Shout out to him, I guess. <laughs> it was really cool because I remember we used to bond over like the subjects we, they were talking about, like leading up to it. And it was really cool because we were given the opportunity to ask them questions about their research and how we could potentially apply that to our research. And the cool thing is, is that they were experts from many different STEM fields. So it wasn't just space, which is what you typically think of when you think about NASA. And there were like meteorologists and people that were studying math and lots of disciplines. And we got to see how they worked together to solve one problem, which is kind of what we did when we were um, working on our own project. So, yeah. So for the modules, before the official uh, internship actually started, C sent us five or four modules and then a fifth optional one. The first module was climate science and background. And this just basically d dealt with global warming and how the earth currently is becoming warmer due to deforestation, uh, gases, and then how the sea level is rising due to all this global warming. Um, we did a lot of background and just climate science. We had to do a bunch of research with the electromagnetic spectrum as well. With the second module, it was about space exploration, science and engineering. Uh, we basically learned a lot about orbital mechanics and we had to use NASA's eyes website which basically allows you to look at any satellite that was that is currently or was in the past in space. And we got to see their orbits, the paths they took, stages, and where they currently are. The third module was about exploring Earth. This was mainly about remote sensing and how NASA uses satellites to uh, basically observe Earth and see oh. anything that's happening from natural disasters to just the soil. Um, they do this by using multiple satellites. One of the satellites we got to learn about was GRAYSAT, which measure, measures the gravity fields. And with the gravity fields, it's able to tell the um, density of the water below or the uh, sea level. And it does this because it has two satellites in the same orbit and path, and it is able to measure the distance between the two satellites. It also measured, measured used ISAT, which measures the ice sheets by using lasers to bounce light off the surface and receive the telemetry. Uh, the fourth mar module was about Mars and beyond. This is just about the technology that the satellites and the rovers used and some of the technology that was under development. 
uh, it was a lot about planets, space, and how telescopes are used to just see far past our galaxy. After those modules, there was the optional module of Python, which just had six interactive notebooks. Uh, the first two taught Python code and some of the commands that you'd use. And then the last four were all projects that would tell you how to use Python to make graphs or charts or pictures. So I'm going to talk about how the teams were formed and the team development. So basically, initially, we were a team of 50 people. And we were in the Space Exploration for a Better World team in the COVID group. And basically, in the beginning, we came up with different topics that related to this main topic. And then once the internship started, uh, everybody got to select which topic they wanted to do research on. So there are about eight people in each group. And our group specifically researched uh, UV radiation and how it could be used to efficiently uh, kill bacteria in the International Space Station. But the teams really varied from like that to like creating an entire space module. So it was pretty cool. And um, uh, so yeah, we did lots of research, which was interesting. We had about a month to complete the entire project. And we worked with people from all across the world, which was really cool. But it was also a little bit hard because uh, there'd be a lot of time differences that we'd have to deal with. But it was definitely a great experience. All right, so just to give everyone an idea of what we had to prepare, I'm going to play our video that was our final project. So you guys can see kind of what one month and the whole entire C's internship. Hi everyone, my team did our project on a UVC sterilization system to be implemented aboard spacecraft. We will start with our background and goals, then cover our details, approach, and results before closing off with recognitions and reflections. Our background and goals. The problem we address is that the ISS has a stable population of 55 microorganisms, including bacteria, mold, fungi, and viruses. With the recent uprise of COVID-19, safety precautions have become a significant focus in order to ensure the health of astronauts, especially since they are more susceptible to illnesses in space. After much research, we decided that UVC radiation would be the most efficient in eliminating any potentially life-threatening bacteria or pathogens that could inhibit the performance of astronauts in space. Since UVC rays in particular have disinfectant properties, our team concluded they would fit our needs as long as we ensured our concept and captured the proper safety precautions. The goals of our system is to eliminate potentially hazardous bacteria and pathogens that threaten the safety of the ISS crew and also the crews of future missions. On to the details and approach. The variables we looked into in order to ensure the safety of our idea was ozone production and radiation. When UVC combines with oxygen, O2 molecules decompose into two oxygen molecules. The oxygen molecules combine with O2 to form ozone, which is harmful to humans. Because this process only occurs with UVC light wavelengths less than or equal to 242 nanometers, we use 254 nanometers. In order to combat the danger presented by radiation, our chamber design includes lead walls and non-perforated materials placed at the openings of the chamber in order to ensure consistent airflow while absorbing all of the radiation. The materials we researched are borosilicate glass cylinders, lead shells, UVC lamps, and UVC containment filters. Borosilicate glass cylinders with diameters of 0.5 meters, length of 1.5 meters, and thickness of 1 centimeter hold immense resilience to temperature change which provides resistance to shattering. A three inch thick lead shell is used to block UVC radiation from escaping and harming the crew. UVC lamps 0.7 meters long are tuned to a wavelength of 254 nanometers to prevent ozone creation. Lastly, a UVC containment filter, which is perforated and non-linear, allows air through but doesn't allow radiation to escape. For ease of research, we divided the project into two subsections, air filtration and UVC. Team Air Filtration focused on how our device would fit into the current system aboard the ISS, and Team UVC researched information about UVC light and the filtration chamber. The hard work of our team allowed us to adequately evaluate where and how a UV sanitation system would operate. Here is a chart of the current air filtration system on the ISS plus UVC. It begins at the electrolysis stack, which separates H2O into H2 and O2 gas. The O2 travels to the crew cabin as breathing air, while the H2 is either vented out or used in the Sabatier reaction. Cabin air's first step is through the physical contaminant filters, which remove harmful objects. 
Next, the air passes through the activated charcoal filters to remove organic vapors and then passes through the high tip catalytic oxidizers, which removes the rest of the chemical contaminants, hydrocarbonates. In our modified system, air would then go to the UVC chamber. After this, the clean air would pass through the moisture reclaimer, which separates any vapor H2O and returns it to the electrolysis stack. The air would then move to the CO2 scrubber, which filters out CO2, with some of it being used for the Sabatier reaction. This reaction uses H2 from electrolysis and produces H2O, which is sent back to the electrolysis stack, and CH4, which is vented into space. From here, the filtered O2 and N2 would be sent back to the cabin air completely clean. This is the 3D CAD design we developed for our UVC sterilization system. On the left is a system with the lead casing. The right model shows a view without the casing to highlight the components in our design. We integrated a cylinder structure for an even distribution of airflow passing through the UVC lamp, resulting in optimal efficiency. We wanted to take a minute now to recognize all the people who helped make this project possible. Thank you to our mentor, Ms. Ebel, and all of the other amazing mentors and speakers. And of course, thank you to the SEAS program as a whole. On to our reflections of the program. The best features of this internship were the speakers and like-minded individuals. Our biggest challenge, however, was organizing meeting times with team members across different world time zones. While the wordings of our individual reflections may vary, they all emphasize how the past month has motivated us all to explore the many different career paths and, accordingly, college majors available to space enthusiasts. It has allowed us to refine and finalize our career aspirations. Thank you. Here are the sources we used. Um, so after the program, um, our mentors encouraged us to publish our um, project in a paper of sorts. Um, so they were the ones that um, proposed that idea and our mentor, Ms. Ebel, actually gave us a resource on um, how to potentially get our project published. So um, some of the steps that we're taking in order to do that are researching further to make sure our topic um, has all of its information just 100% correct. Um, we're researching stuff that we maybe didn't have time for in the project, such as the effect of UVC on other gases, such as carbon dioxide, um, nitrogen, and some of the other trace um, chemicals that would be in the chamber, as well as oxygen. And um, just further research to make sure it all integrates well within the ISS system. So. Yeah, um, there's a lot of options that you can do after the program with the project that you have. Um, so the founders, so me, Sweta, and Isabella actually met through SEAS. And um, through another internship that we were all in together, we decided to create Edu for Space in order to help other students like us um, get, uh, be able to get more involved with space since it seems like such an unobtainable goal. But if you look at all the opportunities out there, there's a lot and we'd like to share that with everyone else who might be interested in pursuing a career in space. All right. So while CS was a high school internship, we and it was targeted towards high school sophomores and juniors who are rising and can take this next year, we will be having webinars like this in the future. And next week, we're actually working on talking to a few different college students who are currently interning with different parts of NASA and SpaceX. So hopefully we'll be having one of them present next week if there's any high school or college students watching the recording and would like to be a part of that and ask questions or just honestly, any of the panelists here. So that's pretty much what we did with C's. And one of the questions we did get is, any tips for aspiring C's interns? Um, basically in your application, make sure you're clear with like what you would like to achieve with your internship and what you would like to do like after and how you're gonna apply what you learned in the internship to like what you wanna do after. Yeah, for the application, uh, do your best and put time and effort into the video if they make you do it again, because that's really what's going to show them 
who you are and what you want to learn? Um, so, yeah, put a lot of effort into the application, but like also if you like don't get into the original program, but like make it into like the secondary program, uh, just don't be sad because like you still get to work with a, a lot of good people and you still get a great experience and a lot of research done. My advice would just be to not really be too intimidated by all of it. There's um, a lot of smart people in the program that are taking a AP Calculus 3 and stuff like that. But there's also people like me, so don't, don't worry about that at all. And um, I'd also recommend just, yeah, definitely if you get into the secondary program, don't turn that down, because I almost did. and that would have been the biggest regret <laughs> that I had this year. So um, just keep an open mind and um, yeah, just don't be intimidated by the project. Um, yeah, I'd say just be authentic with your application because they do want to see like who you actually are and then Definitely, for sure, don't turn down secondary projects if that's what you're what you're accepted into, because um, those are also really interesting and you get a lot of resources and help that you can use. Um, and it's still a great project to work on. For the application itself, be super, super descriptive on what you want to learn, because they base where you they put you on your current level and what you personally can learn from the internship. If you're pretty much like, I know everything and I wanna do this, they don't know where to place you. So just make sure you're very clear on what you wanna learn and what you wanna gain from the experience as a whole and how it'll impact you. And yeah, that's pretty much a wrap on our first webinar ever for Edifer Space. So yay, I'm a stopper.